8 a.m. Saturday morning, and the group has an energetic beginning to the day. Guest Dave McFarlane from Team Samba is here to prove that learning doesn't always have to be in class. This morning, I'm going to teach you how to play Samba. Uh, within the space of an hour, we'll have a full finished piece worthy of performance. Okay, everyone's going to play an instrument. Okay, there'll be some people playing bass drums, <coughs> some playing a go-go bells, some playing uh, tambourines. The activity this morning is um, Team Samba and um, Dave, the facilitator, is getting the group to do different beats with all different musical instruments to get a beat going. And it's very good from the point of view of memory and people learning their different learning styles to see how are they learning. Are they learning by watching Dave? Are they visual? Are they learning by listening when Dave's done it? Can, can they repeat it? Or do they have to actually do it themselves? If they can master this, well then we'll apply that to then in their literacy class. Good, good, good. I want you to play it like a woman, not a lady. Do you know what I mean? It's dun, 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 dun. Okay, it's not going to break, right? They're not used to remembering. You're used to remembering other things, you know? But you're not used to remembering stuff, strange stuff like this, you know? Beats on drums, you know? You're totally taking them out of the comfort zone. Rose on the shakers uh, was, was fantastic. You saw her doing her little dance in the middle. It's like she's missed her vocation, you know? At last, she could play the shakers, you know? Um, uh, Stacy, I think, here on the, the bass drums was fantastic. Brilliant. She was like solid as a rock, standing there, dum 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 no bother to her. It's like she's been doing it all her life, you know? Rose has her story to tell and I have no story, I'm just like this. So it could be school, it could be at home, it could be that uh, my ma's not able to help me with my homework and my dad's too busy. Or it could be that the teachers just can't see that I have a problem. I can't really tell you the answer because I just don't know, it's just to say who I am. My ma and our sisters left school early and they didn't get to read or write. I kind of thought that uh, I got my math changed because I couldn't spell it and because she's the exact same as me, you know that way. I kind of for a long time with her reading and writing when I used to do her homework with her, you know. And she got to an age then and she said, Dad, you, you're just doing that for me, I may as well not be doing it. You know, most kids would be delighted to have a dad that would do that and say, yeah, it's done now, you can go, go out and play. Yeah. There's not a teacher that can't say a good word about Stacey. But when it comes to the real uh, education of Stacey, there's a lot of teachers that will step back. They knew from very young where Stacey was at in that literacy. It's just that the backup wasn't there for to provide that second class, you know, that class that all the kids hate, you know, the stupid class. Which is a horrible stigma to have, you know. So she, she picked her up from that and she's very aware about literacy and how far she can go. My close friends know about my writing difficulties. Uh, I've told them and uh, on my junior cert, they come up and gave me a hand. In my junior cert, I managed to find I had a reader for my English and for all my other subjects that I had to do. So it was, it was kind of easier for me. When I started walking, like that came up and uh, I used to be like annoyed at myself because I wasn't able to do it. Then I'd be saying, oh, all right, like I think I'll leave work because of it. Hello, can I have pizza? Yeah, what's your address? When I'm right now, uh, addresses, I don't know the spelling of them, so I do ask them what's the spelling on the phone. When I'm put on the spot for to do something, I can't really do it there and then, like, so I do get uh, nervous doing that. She would have been shy like myself as well, like, but since the weekend now she said she had a brilliant time and she had us in nuts a lot. Maybe it was a godsend that this all happened because it didn't just come out of blue. I said I'd given her so much confidence in herself as, a, as an individual, not as part of the family. Like she, she was individually doing this thing. She's meeting strange people and they become new people. Yeah, and we open more doors for me, for college, for work for anything, it could open more doors because I'd be confident. 
Yeah, a great trust in her. She's had that grown up in the last week that I just have to grin it and bear it, you know? All right, love, you know what to do. Each of you have inside your skull uh, the most complicated entity in the known universe. And the question is, how do we make the most of that? And that's what I'll be talking about today. Now, People who have missed out on education start, earlier in their life have got more of an uphill struggle to get to the same level. But what they do have when they're older, though, is their brains have developed fully and they can probably concentrate better and they can maybe more motivated to learn. So as these things can compensate for having missed out in that brain moulding education earlier in life. I had a fierce trouble with dyslexia. Right, okay. spelling that. Now for two weeks I okay. was working in a dyslexic centre, so I had okay. dyslexic all over me. Right. But ask me a, a month onwards, I okay. couldn't spell it. Okay. Well, I'll try this then. Supposing you meet someone new here called um, Jim O'Dwyer, okay? So I'm Jim O'Dwyer, imagine that. When you meet Jim O'Dwyer, what you do is make sure you say his name a few times. Keep the name when you're introduced to somebody, say the name two or three times. So I tried it with Ian, uh, even afterwards now I was able to remember his name is Jim O'Dwyer. Uh, there, there I knew two names and I was able to split them between the handshake and the conversation and everything else. So, yeah, I got that out of it. You know and then what? maybe tomorrow, lunchtime. You're lunch probably going to forget your real name and just call you Jim O'Dwyer. <laughs> <from now on. laughs> You know, right. Right. because I, I see yeah. where you're coming from, it yeah. is starting yeah. to click, Jim yeah. Underwear, because you're saying it all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's very complicated for me, because, I can't, I, I'm being really honest with you, I don't know, I can't understand what you're saying. All right. Because it's like going in one and out of for me. I haven't yeah. lost my brain like in so long. Like I learn to use it on the weekend when I'm here, and then I just forget the weekend, because I have other things to be doing with me like. Yeah, it's not fair probably, that's what's probably wrong with so the, the challenge for you is to see if you can learn to concentrate a bit better, because if you concentrated a bit better, you would understand better yeah. what you were hearing or, or reading. Does that make sense to you? A little bit. Paul had been living rough on the streets of Dublin for the last four years, but he started to make real changes in his life when he learned that his girlfriend was pregnant. When I first got told, I was scared. I was scared to tell my mum, I was scared to tell my dad, and the day I got the head out on me because my girlfriend's so young. After a month, it just sunk in the wind. I'm going to be a dad, so I'm delighted. Can't wait. Little baby girl, hopefully. I want to teach my child myself how to read and write. The child came in to me and said, I don't have to read that out to me. Instead of saying, I go on to your mind, I'm all there for you. You know what I mean? What do you mean telling my child I couldn't read? And the child at eight or nine, I have to read and write before it started. Like, it would be a shame in my life for it. The two days that I was to enjoy myself big time, everything was bang on. I swear to God, the, per the learning was perfect. The teachers are bang on. The people in it are bang on. So, like, I'm going down there to learn from each other. Saturday evening back at Kapoor and the students are asked to dress formally for tonight's class. Hiya guys, good evening. My name is Brian Redmond. I've been three times All-Ireland Ballroom Dancing Champion. And tonight we're going to try and teach you guys to ballroom dance. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my assistant here, Kathleen, to help me demonstrate some basic jive. And then in a couple of minutes time, we're going to get you guys up on the floor and we're going to start working with you to try and teach you guys some basic jive. Okay. Go. Back and side to side, side to side, back. Side to side, side to side, back. Back and one, two, three, one, two, three. There's things we do in life. For example, if you're actually typing, that's all done through muscular memory. The fingers know where the keys are, they appear to move themselves. I suppose it's actually storing very important information very deep in the brain, so the actions are created naturally and very quickly without the conscious side of the brain actually having to do it. It's almost like that feeling that you get when you drive a regular route home from work and you arrive home thinking, I don't remember anything that I did on the way. The body looked after itself and it just took you from A to B in a normal everyday pattern. She's having a great time. 
the, the smaller guy, Andrew, was very good. He was excellent. He, um, I think he felt more confident and more relaxed than some of the others did. And it seemed to come to him very, very naturally. Stacy, Stacy was also excellent. Um, I think because she was younger, she felt that this was her thing. It was something that she could do. She could really thrive at. This has been a big week in Paul's life. Two days before he joined up with the others in Kapoor, his girlfriend gave birth to a baby boy. Now, yeah, mommy, if you when she comes out. Right? Didn't think this day had come. Trust me, it was scary. Like any bloke that tells you that it's not that annoying. I only found out it was a boy when it popped out. Well, he said, she said, what do you think it is? I said, a little girl. She goes, it could be right. It pops out, and it's a boy. It's still over the same, like, it's just, I thought it was a girl, like. It's an awful lot of responsibility, like. So, like, I had to cop on, like, in the last month, two months. That baby's just a miracle. Brings everything out, I swear to God. <laughs> I'd just like to say congratulations to Paul on his newborn. Oh. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! He sleeps all day. He sleeps for, he wakes up for two hours and sleeps for four or five hours and then wakes back up. Then he goes to sleep for another two hours and wakes back up. He seems a foot taller. It's amazing what a baby like. He seems to be really confident now with this baby coming along. It's, it's great to say. My girlfriend turned around and said, uh, I've never seen a bloke that actually took to a change in a nappy so quick. When I first found out, it was like, like I don't want the baby getting brought into this world because like, I had nothing. But because now everything is looking up and like, yeah, this, there's nothing like it. It has been an important week for Stacey too. Just days before she completed weekend two in Kapoor, all her family gathered for a big date in her diary. You nervous, hon? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. We got a limousine coming now. Yeah, tonight I'm going to a debutante <laughs> and we'll be getting dressed up and then going off with me classmates and uh, friends of mine. They're all starting to come down, my nerves mm. are going. <laughs> my school uh, doesn't have a debt, so all my friends' devs was coming up and I wasn't going to a deb, so I wanted to have that experience. So. The few students that wanted to go to a Debs, I went up to another school and asked them could we join them going to their Debs. She's really blossoming, you know, she really is after coming out of herself. Thanks, Peggy, and nearly crying coming out. Because just the adrenaline and the rush, you know. I'm starting to come out of my shell like, a bit more, and like, I'm not as. Uh, Nervous, or like I wasn't confident before, like coming out and reading stuff like at home. Like, I'm starting to read like at home, like magazines, you know. I'm starting to get a bit worried. <laughs> she might be coming out too. <laughs> she's not gone that with last day, no, but she's matured enough now that she's uh, oh, I have a teenage of it, she's an adult now, mm. and she looks like an adult, you know. Mm. If you would like to improve your reading, writing and numeracy, call the National Adult Literacy Agency on free phone 1-800-2020-65. That's 1-800-2020-65.